Welcome everyone, my name is Juan Herrera. I'm an organizer of Angular Medellin, one of the most successful meetups in Colombia in Angular, and also organizer of NG Colombia, the first Angular conference happening in Latin America. We're going to have another edition this year, it's going to be November 16, 17. If you want to come, I'm going to publish the call for paper soon so you can apply and come to Colombia, of course. So. I'm, you can find me on Twitter with JD Juan handle as I publish Angular stuff mostly. So if you want to find out about more, you can just follow me and get all of the updates. The slides are here, so you can just click that link and find it out and you can get all the references. The war of tomorrow is shaped by the products we build today. So we're directly responsible of supporting and improving those tools. And there are those tools that are in our ecosystems, which is not composed of animals and trees, but composed of technologies we constantly use. There are two approaches we can take in order to achieve this. We can either improve our past, making direct contributions uh, to the tools we use today in the form of pull requests or filling issues, for example, or we can design our future by bringing brand new technology that didn't exist today in the form of often libraries. So that's what this talk is about, is how to create libraries to support and improve our ecosystem or your companies. This talk is divided in three parts. So part number one is why do we need a library anyway? Second one is, how do I use them in Angular? And third one, show me what you got. How many people have seen Rick and Morty? Raise up your hands. Nice, three people. All right, <laughs> okay. Um, there are many references to Rick and Morty here, so I hope you like them. So, why do you need a library anyway? Let's start with that. There are two primary reasons. Reason number one, you love open source software and you want to become an open source software rock star. You want to bring this brand new library technology that didn't exist before and everyone start using and downloading right away. Say for example, jQuery for Angular, right? Or maybe not, maybe that's not what you want, not a good idea. Uh, either way, maybe you come out with a better idea and you say, what, let's, let's uh, build this native plugin which is a notification that simple, you can add to your project right away with one line. And this actually exists. Uh, Carlos and I did this last year, and it has about 60 downloads per month, so I guess that's okay. You can find it and start using it in your project if you want. So that's the first reason, you wanna create something like that. Or second reason is that you don't have a choice, you have to because you work at a company that it's so large and so complex that you have a, an architecture like this one where you are supposed to make everything work and you have to find ways to make it like reusable, compatible, interoperable, etc, etc, etc. So you end up trying to do the same as Elon Musk, which is not taking us to Mars, but reusability, right? That's what it is after all, reusability. So you want to write once and use everywhere. You want to fix once and fix everywhere. And you want to unit test once and unit test everywhere. That'll be ideally, right? So how do, we do that? how do I do that in Angular? That's the question. That's what you came here for. So it turns out that Jason Aiden and Igor Minar came out with a document called the Angular Package Format B5. In this document, they specify how you should build your libraries. That's how uh, Angular Material, Angular Core is built, so you can actually go ahead and read it and understand it. Although, this document is an 11 pages document, so it turns out if you want to build a library, a super cool library like Nginotif, um, well, you have to like, spend an hour trying to understand this document, and just for one reason, compatibility. Just like if you didn't have enough you know, with browsers, Inner Explorer, Edge, Chrome, Firefox, etc., you also have to make your libraries compatible so that they can work in different platforms and environments. And that sucks. Yeah, like, yeah, that 
that's been the story of our lives, right? So you have to come up and read this document again and try to understand it. But no worries. I'm here to uh, help you out with that. I'm going to explain to you what that document is in a very simple format. So first, we have three main parts. First one is platforms. We want to make our library compatible with different platforms, be it Node, JS Fiddle, um, uh, native script, whatever. Second one, we, hand, we want it to, it to be compatible to TypeScript. And third one, we want to make it AOT compatible so that it compiles ahead of time. So let's go one by one. In the first one with platform, we have a first scenario. Scen scenario number one, you want to make your library compatible with the Node ecosystem. You want to be able to put it in the script tag so that you can say, like, hey, just add this to your project and you got your notification working. That'd be great, right? And we want to use it in Plunker, Stablitz, JS Fiddle. In order to achieve that, you just need something called a UMD module format. That's all. If you add this module to your project, if you build your library in a UMD format, those platforms will be supported. And that's great. That's all you need. But there is another scenario. Turns out that, oh, by the way, this is how a UMD format module looks like, which doesn't render very well. doesn't matter. Scenario number two, you want to make it compatible with Webpack, or Rollup, or maybe the Angular CLI itself. So if you want this scenario to be compatible, you also need to add another format to your building process, which is called FESOM5 format, which is probably something you never heard before. It's, this is kind of new or weird, uh, but it's pretty simple. It is called a flat Atmoscript module in Atmoscript 5. And, and that's probably even weirder, but let's take a look at how that looks like. It turns out that flat means that all your files get concatenated into just one. Because how many people has read the cost of a small module span Nolan Lonson? The cost of a small module. Awesome. <laughs> just bitterly, bitterly, thank you. Uh, you should read it. It's a very good post. Uh, the second one is Atmoscript modules, which are imports or exports. I'll show you in a second. And the uh, third one is Atmoscript 5, which is uh, functions, like, like the level of the Atmoscript. So how does it look? Atmoscript flat module is concatenating everything into, into one file. So it's more um, optimized. Second one, we have import exports at the top. So that means you can do tree shaking and that code elimination, which is great, because that way you can uh, and use, like, remove the code you're not using. And third one, you can have ES5, which make it compatible for Rollup, Webpack, or Angular CLI, which is, instead of using classes and constructors, which is what you have in your Angular pro project, you will have functions, right? So that's, that's, well, that's the format you should build if you want to make it compatible for those scenarios. And final one, scenario number three. You want to make it compatible with the Clusher compiler or in an optimized way of, for, of Webpack so that your library compiles even better, has, is more optimized. In such case, you just want to do the same as a FESOM 5, but instead a FESOM 6. In other words, FESOM 2015, which is the same flat Atmoscript module, but instead of uh, building it for ES5, you build it for ES2015. Uh, so same thing you just saw, just using actual classes and constructors. That's it. So just three files, that's all you need. And when you have those three files, all those platforms will be supported. So that's what you, have, you need to have into consideration if you want to do it. So we cover platforms. And that's what you need if you want to build a library that uh, it's compatible. But we need something else. We need TypeScript. Uh, I don't know if you felt this before, but I actually I love it. That feeling when you're writing and you suddenly press the dot keyboard and it starts auto-completing everything and you're confident that whatever it's showing, it's there. It's going to work because, right, it feels amazing. I love it, which doesn't happen in JavaScript. You just press dot and nothing is going to show up, right? So I love this feeling. And if you want your consumers of the library to have the same feeling, maybe you want to add some typings, which are the DTS files is that they just have an Atmoscript module format. So they look like this. So you have import experts, but you pretty much have declarations. So that when the user consumes your library, they can actually see all the methods and functions you have there available for them to use, which is pretty neat. 
that was it for TypeScript. And final one, AOT. This is for uh, the AOT compiler. Does everyone know, raise up your hand, those who understand the difference between JIT compiler and AOT compiler. Please raise up your hand. OK. I, I don't know the difference either. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, it's very simple. Uh, it's like a, a more optimized way of compiling your um, Angular application. I'm not going to dive into details, but uh, you want to make it compatible, um, compatible with AOT so that your library can build in those applications that use AOT by default. That's pretty simple as well. You just need a file called metadata.json file. Once you add that file, which looks like a Nuclify version of a JavaScript file like this one, your library will be compatible with AOT applications, which is amazing. And as you do that, you're all set up. You're all done. You're all your uh, platforms, scenarios, etc., and tools will be compatible with your library, which is great. That's it. And yeah, Rick dancing. Uh, but it turns out that some of you, I'm pretty sure some of you, are feeling like this right now. Like, oh my god, what's all of this I need to do in order to build a library? How am I supposed to contribute to an ecosystem if I have to do all of this to, to, to do anything, right? So don't worry, it's, that's what third part is for. Show me what you got. So what I'm going to show you here is the effort of members of our ecosystem or our community that try to make it easier for us to build the libraries of tomorrow. These people over here, they have made different efforts, such as Jurgen with the Generator Angular 2 library. This is a Yeoman project where you will scaffold your library right away so that you just run a command and you get your library there working and ready to be built, filling all those compatibilities you need. In the second scenario, we have David, which made ng-packager, which is a little bit more popular. And ng-packager is a build command you can use in its, an existing Angular project. And then you get your library right away working. Or you can use Carlos, my friend, who also made it possible to do it with schematics, uh, which is this brand new thing that's coming with Angular. So any of those approaches is pretty simple. And I'm going to show you super quick how you can do it. So let's go with the first approach number one, generator Angular to library. First, you go to your terminal and you type yo Angular 2 library, right? Then it will ask for some information. Library name, who's your name, what's the GitHub repo, etc., etc. And once you fill that information, you will get all your projects set up. Like a whole library where you can start adding new functionality, components, services, whatever you like to do. You run npm run build and voila. You have a UMD format module to start with, a metadata JSON file, um, file to AOT compatible, or your type things, a file module called index.js and package.json and readme to start using it right now. So it's pretty simple. It, it just took five minutes or less. I, I explain all of this because it's important. Sometimes with our companies, we need to make like complex, personalized, tailored build processes. So it's important we to understand this, like the whole picture. But that's very simple. That's how you sh can achieve it. And with ng-packager, for example, it's even better because it bundles every, every different format in a folder following the exact specifications of the Angular package format that I showed you before. So this is even better. Uh, the good news is that this is also coming to the Angular CLI. Uh, we've been expecting this for a long time, and I assume it's coming to V6. So in April, pretty much, you're probably going to be able to um, see the, uh, the app create libraries, something like that. They're creating something like a build facade, facet, facet, build facet, a build facet. So that will allow them to actually create not only Angular projects, but libraries or anything else you want to build inside. So that's going to be compatible, for example, with community efforts like ng-packager. So in April uh, or June, you can still keep using ng-packager, and you can still use it with Bazel, which is the new build tool that's going to come up. Uh, Jury, it's also going to speak about this, uh, I guess, tomorrow. So you can go ahead and watch his talk. Ju is Jury here? No. Oh, he promised to come. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, he's going to explain to you how to create Angular libraries as well in a more detailed uh, process, but you can uh, still see him. Uh, he also published a talk in NGBulging 
awesome talk. He explained every process with a gulp task, I guess. Uh, super nice. I love it. For more details where you will be able to find and understand how to publish a library, how to do uh, modular resolution strategies, which are different ways and in different ways to consume your library, or best practices, or how to our testing and unit tests, all of that you can probably ask uh, in his talk. Um, that's it. Thank you very much.